Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Jason, host of Finding Words Financial. Today, I'm going to cover another genomics company. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from cryptocurrencies that I've been covering a lot lately, uh, largely because it's kind of timely to Genomic stocks have really gotten beat up in the last four or five months, really since the beginning of the year. And we even see the ARC Genomic Fund, I think it's down almost 30% for the year. Uh, you know, this in a way is to be ex expected. And uh, I'm going to tell you why here. Last year, every stock, almost every stock involved with genomics went up like crazy. And a lot of that had to do with just sort of an infection of investor enthusiasm. Now that that infection is over, or at least has subsided, kind of like coronavirus, we're going to see some of these companies are going to rise uh, above. They're going to be the cream of the crop. And some of these companies are going to be acquired by others for pennies on the dollar, or they're going to fail. But I wanted to introduce you to some of the companies that are in ARC, uh, you know, the ARC Genomics Fund portfolio. Just talk about some of the major holdings that are in there why uh, Kathy Wood is holding these in her portfolio, what makes them important, and uh, how they've been doing lately, and what that says about their long-term prospects. So today, we're gonna be discussing an exciting company that really could be shaking up the medical industry here for years to come, and that company is Pacific Biosciences. It's a California-based biotech firm that develops and markets gene sequencing systems. Throughout this video, we're gonna talk, we're gonna to touch on Pacific's uh, background and how they're currently performing. Then we're gonna look at their financials and we're gonna see if we can get an inkling into how their stock may perform going forward. So as always guys, sit back and relax and I'm gonna dive right into this company. The idea for Pacific Biosciences was generated way back in the early 2000s by a gentleman named Stephen Turner, who at the time was studying for his PhD in physics at Cornell University, not in, not in genetics, in physics. Uh, Stephen's PhD project revolved around the study of biomolecules behavior in nanofabricated structures. Now, I'm not even going to pretend that I really know in detail uh, what they're talking about. I read a couple of the papers that came out of his project. It sounds really fancy, but I really didn't understand all of it. So while he was studying for his doctorate, Stephen and his team developed the foundational technology that would later be used as the, basic, uh, as the basis for Pacific Biosciences launch. The technology revolved around DNA sequencing and was so innovative that it led to uh, it being a cover story for the academic journal Science in back, way back in 2003. Following this story, Pacific Biosciences was officially launched in 2004 with Stephen Turner and his team helping secure all of the Series A funding. So what does Pacific Biosciences actually do? Well, simply put, the company designs and creates systems for gene sequencing. And I can see, hear some of you thinking right now, Jason, what exactly is gene sequencing? I'm going to give you a basic rundown right now. Gene sequencing is uh, also known as DNA sequencing. It's a process of determining the order of DNA nucleotides. DNA is made up of four different, uh, let's just call them base molecules, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Being able to illustrate the order in which these bases come allows researchers to make considerable advances in a diverse range of fields such as medicine, forensics, anthropology, and a couple of other things. You have to think of your DNA as essentially being a biological pro pro programming language. Instead of ones and zeros, you have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. So it's a bit more complex than a base two language. Uh, anyway, there's whole papers that are written on this. I'll get to those one of these days when I'm talking about genomics. But to provide a practical example of this, being able to sequence a person's DNA theoretically will allow researchers to know whether or not that individual is more susceptible to some sort of debilitating disease like cancer or heart disease or a whole host of other diseases that have genetic influences. Thanks to uh, the forward-looking approach of Pacific Bioscientists, Medical, medical personnel can take this information and implement preventative medicine, which increases the chances of a person being able to combat these future ailments. Furthermore, the information that's gathered from large amounts of gene sequencing can help scientists develop and inform uh, medical treatments. Data from gene sequencing provides valuable insights into rare diseases as well, helping to create ever more efficient patient solutions. Aside from the medical sector, anthropologists are also benefiting from gene sequencing technology that's provided by Pacific Biosciences. DNA sequencing can help researchers determine how different organisms are related and how the evolutionary process happens. 
Finally, forensic scientists can also use gene sequencing data to help profile potential criminals. I think we've all heard about this at this point. DNA patterns in, in fingerprints, saliva, and hair can be used to identify individuals who may have been present at a crime scene, aiding police forces in solving cases. So as you can see, this gene sequencing technology is pretty valuable in modern times. Now let's take a look at what Pacific Biosciences is doing with these innovative systems. Now at the time, these systems really were best in class and leading the way in the field. However, due to rapid advancement of sequencing technology, Pacific Biosciences products found themselves falling behind their rivals, most notably Illumina Incorporated. To combat this, Pacific Biosciences launched their SQL system machine way back in 2015, which was designed to be seven times faster and more efficient than their original systems. This was upgraded to SQL 2 in 2019, which added even more processing power. As recently as October 2020, Pacific Biosciences unveiled their uh, SQL 2E system. Uh, this was really supposed to rival the sort of best-in-class gene sequencing companies out there. This added even more computing power, allowing scientists to sequence DNA quicker and uh, more cost-effectively than ever. However, it's worth putting this into context with the market as a whole. As I mentioned before previously, one of Pacific Biosciences' biggest rivals was Illumina. Now, Illumina also designs gene sequencing uh, and markets gene sequencing technology. However, they use something that's called a short read approach, which is thought to be more accurate and less expensive than the long read approach used in Pacific Biosciences systems. Interestingly, Illumina was actually set to acquire Pacific Biosciences way back in 2018. Ultimately though, the Federal Trade Commission scuttled that deal as they deemed it to violate antitrust laws. Pacific Biosciences did get a hefty settlement though. They got a $98 million payment from Illumina, even though the deal never went through, which I think that's really good for a deal that never happened. However, this failed merger prompted a large scale overhaul of Pacific Biosciences upper management with a new CEO, CFO, and COO, and CCO all arriving in the latter half of 2020. All right, so let's move on for that and let's take a look at the future and financials for this company. Initially, the combination of a brand new management team and the launch of their new SQL 2E program prompted a lot of bullish momentum. Uh, from the beginning of August to early February, Pacific Biosciences stock rose a whopping 1,150%. That's pretty crazy. However, from February until the time of this recording, shares have fallen about 56% with the bears now firmly in control of where their stock is going. But why is this? Well, a lot has been put down to really poor quarter one results. Uh, Pacific Biosciences revenues for quarter one of 2021 totaled $28.9 million, which although is much higher year on year, ultimately fell well short of analyst expectations. Furthermore, Pacific made uh, an operating loss of, in Q1 of roughly $33.7 million, nearly $10 million more than Q1 of 2020. Consequently, Pacific Biosciences' share price is currently sitting right around $23 a share, a far time from the all-time highs of $53 a share, or $53.57, that were experienced in February. So is this just a knee-jerk reaction to poor financial data, or is it an indication of the market's long-term settlement? I think it's really a reflection of uh, expectations just coming back down to reality. Um, you know, I think the price ran up way too fast, way too high, way back in 2020, based on expectations that simply weren't realistic. Uh, so a recent report by Precedence Research stated that global DNA sequencing is projected to be around a $40.64 billion business by the year 2030. We aren't at 2030 yet, so I think the real success is quite a quite a uh, quite a ways far away at this point. So looking at these estimates, though, it's clear to see that there's a lot of room for growth for Pacific Biosciences over the long term if they're able to keep on that bleeding edge of technology. But can they maintain their position at the head of the market in the face of this advancing technology? I think that over the next few months. We're going to see uh, some insight into this. I'm curious to see how their new products are actually selling and what other uh, what other scientists and companies have to say about their products. As we come out of the pandemic, it's gonna be interesting to see whether there's an uptick in demand for Pacific Biosciences systems, especially in light of the threat from Illumina. In my opinion, 
this stock is worth keeping an eye on over the remainder of 2021. If we see further partnerships develop between Pacific Biosciences and other top companies, it may indicate an attractiveness for their technology and consequently an attractiveness for their shares, right? So anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at Pacific Biosciences today. I enjoyed researching it and talking about this company with you. Uh, like I said, I think a lot of the run-up in the stock last year was due to the fact that it was simply in Arc's genomics portfolio. It had caught Kathy Wood's eye. I think expectations ran a little bit too high, a little bit too fast, and now we're seeing sort of a retracement of, uh, of, you know, of, of the stock price. So let me know what you think in the comments down below about Pacific Bioscientists. Is their recent stock decline uh, just uh, you know a short-term uh, anomaly, or do you think it indicates something larger? Also, if you could, give a second or two to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. And finally, if you want to finance more content from me, feel free to check out my Patreon. There's a great group of investors on our Discord server. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much.